Okay. Um, <laughs> let's move on to um, look. Where were we last Saturday? We were right back to the lab at Sadler's Wells in Islington. I didn't know that you went. I thought it was just Sophia. Wow. Go Alto. Sorry. No, no uh, um, you're done. I feel like Tali kind of concluded it. <laughs> I thought you were going to come in for like up. 16 <gasps> bars. Of and just take us. Oh, yeah. bars. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the. I don't know. So we went to back to the lab. Um, yes, it was your first time ever at a breaking convention. Like uh, <gasps> she went to bre- you went to breaking convention before. Never. <gasps> you papped your oh, cherry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we're definitely going to the main one then this you, year. Yeah. You broke your cherry breaking con- breaking Very good. cherry Very good. convention. All right. Good. Well. <laughs> So that was your first time at any breaking convention thing ever. Yes. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. Um, I, I told you. No, I knew that you hadn't been to like one of their development things, oh. but I didn't know you hadn't even been to the main one. Nope. That's so in- it's was- one of those things you just feel like everyone in the scene has been mm-hmm. to a breaking convention thing. But because the first time I was, there was COVID. So it didn't happen. <sighs> I think or it was online. And last year I was working, so I couldn't go. Right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But- yeah. So we, <laughs> so your first time you yeah. have done open art surgery and back to the lab yeah open art surgery <clears> by <throat> yourself no i did it with jack point and mckenzie aha uh-huh. and then did i even see that maybe and then you did two back to the labs one with carrie ann and one with Quayley. yeah so as a dancer for carrie ann and then as a fellow mutual maker with yeah quails lovely and you have done back to the lab and open art surgery i've done in one year i did <laughs> i did <laughs> open surgery and open then i did surgery. yeah and then i did back to the lab and then i did the main stage like i just wow you just completely not the them up nice levels. yeah yeah it should be like a bingo bc <laughs> yeah bc bingo yo we could make that like if you've what you've performed or battled at like <laughs> yeah, in, yeah. In, my only question is how come i wasn't invited on the tour the following year that would have only made sense well i'm sure that was based on on how good the piece is. <laughs> yeah, I was like, the quality of the work. <laughs> I mean, that's only fair. I look at it at... Who did you do main Pax. stage with? Pax. Uh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I'd, wait. Did Traplord do that year? No, no, this was way before that, oh. I think. Mm, no, I think. not way before. Well, I this was, was the year the we year met. So that's year six that? years ago. Yeah, but Traplord... Oh, maybe. ...was born yeah. in, like, 2015. No, I think it was a year before. Right. I, I think, think I was there. Yeah, I'm sure you no, there. I saw your back to the lab. Yeah, or open pads. art. Um, yeah. I saw that one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what have I? I've done open art once, twice, maybe three times. I think I want to mm-hmm. say three times. I've never done back to well, the look lab. Look at us reeling off our credits. Yes, yeah. we're somewhat famous, you know. <laughs> um, if you needed to know why we were qualified to sit in front of these microphones, <laughs> you Here just got you it. go. <laughs> um, <laughs> So where did all of these pieces? Because you went on Saturday. You went on Saturday. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) no, I mean, like, where did we get? (laughs) It's like after we did those pieces. Next (laughs) topic. Did we take them anywhere? (laughs) No, no, none of our. That I'm just balancing, boasting with. No, that that is very true. All of my pieces tanked. And like a solid, (laughs) like now running the artists, like you know, in professional development, like that is a thing. Like to push on to the next, just cultivating ideas yeah. and providing a space for them to be born. But then, like, where do they? Well, I think it's super interesting because I feel like with Back to the Lab and Open Art, I feel like it's a really kind of strange, if you want to see it that way, or great um, middle ground between a sharing and a sure. debut of a piece. Yeah. So it's like on one end, you could look at it as like a sharing like we would usually have in a studio or something where it's like here's what we've been working on in our r&d or our creation for for a week or two weeks everyone come and have a look at it and usually those would be a lot smaller and a lot more like we all just kind of come into the studio and yeah Yeah. informal and you you don't even really have seats or there's no lighting or anything like that right or you could look at it as the debut of a new piece right which is like that's finished that's finished and it's like oh here's my new piece and this is me showing it to all the people i want to invite and uh i don't know programmers or whoever you would want to invite to that and then it's like from here now we're going to start this is the start of the piece's journey and obviously it's going to be developed and Mm. you're going to apply for funding and get more wait uh do more work on the piece to build it but this is me saying here is my first go at it kind of thing mm, right and yeah. i think back to lab and open art sit right in the middle of that 
thing because it's not one and it's not the other what is it is and it isn't both you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's like we kind of have just threw this together in a week but it also is me saying here's the done piece you know what i mean it's yeah it's kind of a sharing with production value yeah, I mean, well, uh, you can use it either way. Uh, yeah, and I to. guess there there is different people that use it for different in different ways. Where you have some people that have an idea that's already matured in their head and that they've already kind of worked on, mm. and so they kind of know what they want to do exactly. with the yeah. week and what they want to achieve. And then there's some people that just go with like a very very early stage of an idea or maybe not an idea at all, and they just want to try something. Yeah. yeah. So I think you kind of make get the space for depending on what level you're at but it would be i guess like before the stage where you're like kind of almost finished and just looking for production like Mm. stage time yeah for anyone that isn't aware the audience also give feedback Mm -hmm. after they've seen the work which is a thing (laughs) and i think if you it's like the pieces don't come with disclaimers Mm. So they watch, I think the audience like watch them with similar eyes without, oh, this was just an idea they played with and they're probably never going to go near it again. Or like this person's had this idea for months and like this is, yeah, you don't debut. know anything. Like you don't know anything. Because mm. mm. when you said about the debut and inviting people, it's like, I don't think I'd invite any producers or anything to back to the lab. Because what if the audience like rip it? To yeah. Pieces? True. Or unless you're really confident, like you're like, all right, this is me just doing like a third draft of this same thing I've done already. I've yes. I know yeah. how audience reacts. Like, yeah, which kind of was. Like when Qualey and exactly, I did yeah, it, it yeah. was like a scene of a thing that yeah. was already mm. in existence. Yeah, yeah. It's I haven't been for a while, but the audio, like that part of it is can be intense. It can be intense. Yeah, to be in the <laughs> audience for and to be on the stage receiving, I just think it it can get mm. it can get really a lot. As, especially it's like with informal sharings generally all the creatives involved have invited those people. So they yes. want those specific people's opinion <laughs> where back to the lab is cheap, but the audience have paid to be there and they know what their role there is. And like that can really be amped up in parts, can't it? Yes. And I think the other thing that's worth mentioning on that is like, if I invite you or invite Jen, whoever to come and watch a piece that I'm like doing as a sharing and I want you to give me feedback. A, like you said, I've invited you because I want your feedback, but also B, there's a certain level of like, you have experience giving feedback. So you know how to give feedback. Right. And I think that's um, like, it goes a long way because it's like, you also know what the journey of a piece is. And you're like, right, this has only been, oh, this is what you've made in a week. Okay, cool. Well, in that case, here's my opinion. Or, oh, this has been like an eight week fucking creation or whatever. Eh, well, then, you need, you know, or whatever it might be. And it's also like the difference of you might, let's say if you, you come in to watch my piece, you might watch something not completely, like not understand it at all, but then ask me, um, Oh, well, what was your intention? Okay, well, then if that was your intention, I'm not getting that, but maybe we can help you. Like you're giving me feedback based on things that can help my development of the piece. And I think my only, not criticism, but it's just something that I don't like about the open art or or back to the lab feedback from the general public is that they sometimes, and it's kind of part of the charm of it, I guess. It just depends. I've just been in the shoes of an artist on the stage and I haven't so much loved it where they don't know how to give feedback necessarily. Right. And what ends up happening is that people take it as a, like, um, almost like a fun, like, can you tell us your thoughts about this piece, which is fine. If I'm standing next to you in a gallery and we're looking at pen, I'm like, well, what do you reckon that's about? And you're like, Oh, I reckon it's about this. And then I'm like, no, I think it's about that. But when you're doing it to the artist who's just spent a week creating it and you're saying, well, you know, I see a really like, a deep dark struggle with it and you're like you're or you're trying to get something positive across and they're like yeah i just thought you looked so in pain and you're like <laughs> you know or something like that or it's like completely the opposite or, or you're just saying something like um i don't know the I'd way i'd like you- to see you go more down the road of yeah whatever and there's also <laughs> a touch of like 
it's the sometimes depending on who's in the audience it can be their time to shine in the sense of like i've got a mic like mm. let me tell you how i know how to dissect theater and it's like well the intricate themes of the third act were really like present in the book and it's like it, it really <laughs> And it, it sometimes feels like there's there's people and a bit you know, of self indulgence. Yeah, a bit of a self indulgence. And I think that's normal and natural and it happens when you're just an audience member but you get given a mic to yes. speak in front of everyone. Yes. And we're performers, so we're used to quelling that part of us yes. in order to give real feedback. And I think once you've been once and you know what it is, yes. it all makes sense and is Yeah. There's nothing wrong with any of it. No. But I yeah. think when you haven't been or don't quite know the nature of what might come back like it is a bit of a, a shock to the I think you system. definitely have to be prepared for mm. those type of things they're not I mean it's also I think it's a bit um what do you call that disarming because like the Breaking Convention team are so friendly and nice and it's like you go and you see Johnsy's like big smiley face and like Michelle's super helpful and everyone who's there is always super lovely to you and you're like what this is gonna be a breeze and then you're like holy shit, this was a tough fucking week. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like, yeah. it's not, it's, it, you do need a bit of a like, keep your, not keep your walls up, but what's the word? Like, keep a bit of a thick skin with it. It's, it's going to yeah. be a tough week. And I think it's similar to, <clears throat> no, it's not about auditions at all, actually. I can't make that connection, but <clears throat> it's like just remembering why like you're there yes. and doing yeah. it. And if it is because you know the piece really well and it is about like kind of gaining some insight as to what people think of it then cool but if it's like just about the time in the room and you kind of want to put a filter between yourself and the audience so you're not mega affected by the feedback like that's fine as well but I think just going in like whatever happens I think you could be prone to actually get lost being quite affected yeah I think that's a it. that's a good artistic tip anyway is like if you're too open and free with anything you can really get pulled because a lot of people have a lot of strong opinions about art in general which is what makes it beautiful but whether that's like the breaking convention team and like giving their the mentors and stuff giving their feedback whether it's the audience yes. whether it's the other dancers whether yeah. it's people in the week that you show a half finished work on your phone and they say oh i don't like this part and you're like i just spent three hours working on that part what do you mean mm. you don't like it and it's like you kind of have to always have a have your compass set in the right way if that mm -hmm. makes sense because it's ve and a nice balance with not having it too set so that you don't listen to anyone's feedback yeah i've mm -hmm. done both you know i've done both extremes where i'm like no one tell me anything i'm doing it how i I'm want just the whole showing week. it to you yeah and then i've got the <laughs> other end where i'm like everyone give me your feedback and mm. both killed me so it's like <laughs> yeah, i think the third time we did it we nailed it like in terms of approach but um mm. yeah it's a it's worth um a bit of Prep. who did you see <clears throat> so sophia sophia over there you can't see her guys we'll maybe try and get a second camera at some point but um sophia is actually writing a review on back Ooh. to the lab which will be published on the capsule website um, Ooh, published writer yeah very good and are you doing like pills well oh. Sorry, um, I was like, is she doing pills when she's no, writing? Like, well, uh, <laughs> writing. Just like on the wall in blood. Yeah, are you, are you um, well, popping before you well, go the in? Only, <clears throat> we usually would do pills today now. So we're doing a double review. We're doing this one and we're going to do the written one. We would do it. However, something worth keeping in mind for us is that they're all work in progress pieces. or We're treating them as such. Mm -hmm. So even if people ha think that this is finished, however, we're going to review it and speak about it as if it's a work in progress should you want to expand yes. and build on it so mm -hmm. it doesn't for me doesn't feel right to do the capsule pill rating today yeah. because it's like we Way can rate progress. maybe approach or something like that but to say the piece is like a two yeah, out of five true. when you're like i'm not done yeah, like <laughs> you know yeah because then you'd be, do it, you'd be doing what the we thing. just said yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, but Sophie is going to take the lead with her thoughts on the pieces and I will chime in as I usually do. Okay. Hit it! <laughs> All right. So, I really I need to understand what you said, but okay. I said, hit it! Yeah, I got it after like a few seconds. Hit it! It's fine. Hit All it. right. So, um, I don't know if it's usual. <laughs> I don't know if it's usual, but there was four artists. Uh, uh, there's usually the more. Work. She asked a question. No, no, she, <laughs> question. Yes. she said, I don't know if it's usual. <laughs> All right, that's no, Hallie's going to tell you. No, it's fine. Yeah. Four? Is there usually four? 
Because open art is like six. Interesting. But I think because the uh, open art, you have like five days and then the sharing yeah. and then back to the lab, you have a week Two of weeks. learning. Yeah. And then the week of making. And I think back to the lab, you're supposed to have the idea. Right. And I think you can have maybe more people with you. Yeah. So I yeah. think there's less artists that do it. And I ah. think you're paid mm. more too. Right, got you. Yeah. Yeah. Or the expenses are higher, whatever. All right, thank you. That's um, okay. Fact yeah, check. so that was um, four artists uh, this year that presented some work. So firstly, we had Big Girl Ambush, um, which uh, she also had with her uh, Elise Antonia and Will, Will Timpson. Mm. Um, so the three of them. <coughs> uh, so she created a piece about her the her journey with eating disorders, which was really interesting, I think. Um, so in her piece, uh, Elise and Will were supposed to represent the disorders and she was representing herself. And um, throughout the piece, we see how they both come and start control her and have an influence on her and how she fights it mm. um i think it was really well done like not only with the dance because um they also use the lights with like like some sort of color code mm -hmm. which like like the piece starts and um the two dancers are on one side of the room with like some kind of purple light on them or she's on the other side uh, in a more white light and then it kind of comes together and she ends up being in a purple light so like it kind of reference also that like her um their how do i say that like her their grip on her if that makes sense mm. um <coughs> and yeah i feel like it was super strong like they had super strong musicality and like their style was super unique like each of them could really we could really see like their own style which was really nice it's a nice contact work in that piece actually those are the moments yeah. that stood out to me is like it almost like surprised me. I was like, oh, nice. Yeah, especially the music was edited with like, it, like we kind of all knew the song, but then like the edits mm. like comes in, the little sounds and Simeon we don't expect did it. That, didn't he? Simeon Campbell did the music, I think. Ah, uh, that makes sense. But yeah, it was, yeah, I really enjoyed the music. Um, and uh, so throughout the piece, she tried to liberate from, uh, liberate herself from the, the grip uh, of the two dancers and the idea she manages to do it. And like, there's some spoken words that resonate in the room um explaining like how she feels about her body image uh and that's only later on that we understand that she when she said that um, the piece was actually about eating disorders mm. so we don't actually understand like specifically eating disorders right. in the somebody piece. nailed that in the audience though oh really i don't like know they, if they, they sabotaged her and it was like one of her friends or something but like they were like oh what do you <laughs> give us well it was like what do you think this piece is about or something 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 eating disorder something something mm. it was like interesting nail on head did like, you get that from no, it no i don't think i don't no? think you're supposed to, like as in i mean you if the, no if she hadn't told me would i know that that was about any sort of no yeah no like i wouldn't know if it's specifically about that but it would have popped in my head because she talks oh, yeah? like in the spoken words she talks about her body like right. ah, okay. and now she sees herself so it could have been like many topics but mm -hmm. like that could have been one of them especially, I, like, yeah sorry, sorry i also have like um i don't watch pieces trying to figure out i'm more about yeah i'm like if it it is more like i take a passive mm. in terms of narrative i take a passive if i see a narrative fine otherwise i'm concentrating on like the dance and the, the mm. other aspects which i enjoy just as much like i could watch a whole piece and not have it be narrative and it's still yeah. nice so i'm like if i get a narrative cool but i'm not like what do i think this is about you know yeah yeah, yeah. but also <clears> i think her spoken words really helped because yeah she didn't speak about her body until the very end so it could have been literally about anything about be like bu like bullying or yeah. like any other kind of topic or just some sort of discrimination or whatever mm -hmm. so i feel like it was cool that it was kind of um open to interpretation mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I also like that she mentioned that it was about eating disorders and like it. It wait. I think when the moment she said it, it made it uh, way more personal. Yeah, I think um, it is good to have a like a little bio or a little supporting. Yeah, definitely something. I feel like I was speaking to someone else about this, but I feel like the either the bio or what you'll write up about the piece that you're about to watch, especially if the audience are given the programs. Yeah, it's like if you consider it like part of the piece is what people have read, then I think it's a it's. Because some people are like, oh, I don't know what to write about the piece. And it's like, I went to Black, White, Grey. Mm. And it's like, oh, all they had in the program was just like a little poem. And it's like, it doesn't have to be that you necessarily explain it or whatever. Mm. It's just like, if you consider this piece of paper as part of your piece, like a, a 
how you're going to prep the audience. It's like, what do you want mm-hmm. them to know? It can be a full on explanation. It can be just like that one. It could be statistics about uh, eating disorders or do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's just something that you want the audience to get before they, right, yeah. like a yeah, little appetizer yeah. before yeah. the thing. Yeah, exactly. And I think you can use it in nice ways. Yeah. So, but yeah. also I like, I like the fact that we figure out after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or maybe you don't want to give them yeah. exactly. Until so you after. have your own interpretation and then it's like, oh, it was actually about that. And you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, it's really cool. I like that. Um, I feel like when she spoke about it afterwards during the feedback, like eating disorders obviously is super personal and like everyone lives it in different ways. And I feel like maybe with her piece, I would have liked it to be a, like a more personal, if that makes sense. Mm. Like go deeper? Yeah, because it um, not even go deeper, but make it more like about her and how she, how she lived it. Like mm. uh, because it seemed very linear. It was like she's on her side, it, everything's fine. Then the disorder comes, and then she fights it, and then so that's it's a, it. yeah, it's about the concept of disorders as opposed yeah. to your specific journey. Exactly. Right. Which I think is maybe in in storytelling or writing or whatever is where you're going to get the strongest story from is when it's based on something that you've or a specific yeah, experience exactly. or, or yeah rough stuff to get close True. to though. True. i mean yeah it's even a rough thing to choose in the first place mm. yeah regardless mm. of but i think i think um like just generally speaking about the the topic of the topic of of like picking a, the the a topic yeah <laughs> picking a theme for a, to- a topic i think in one way picking something that is really personal makes it really difficult to approach and maybe to even like especially in a context like this where people are going to watch it and mm. give feedback and you know i think maybe mm. the an impulse as an artist is to like speak to something that you know so speak about something that happened to you but i think that sometimes that can be challenging even in the process of making mm. where you know, maybe it's harder to detach and look objectively at what you're doing if it's all wrapped up in especially something like super emotional mm. or yeah. super difficult or challenging. But also, I guess it might be a good way to confront it and come to term come yeah. to terms with it. But I just think <coughs> it's a really difficult uh, thing to, to not, or it can be a, a difficult thing to navigate. Yeah. And then yeah. on the other side, I think that having like, you know, a, ge- a very general like, like oh the environment or the climate crisis yeah. might be like well there's nothing m- pers- like there's not much that's personal and it's mm. just like a general thing so maybe it might lack some emotional pull so i not to say one is good or the other or some sometimes it's like you can pick a story or you can pick a story or a perspective that's uh specific but not yours mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like companies that explore you know that r- like do interpretation of like old myths or yeah, true. stories so i think that in picking those topics or the what you want to work on or like grieving for example where it doesn't have to be about when you lost your parent but it's about maybe like the process of grieving or something yeah like that. but I, I would say even with those bigger topics you still need to tell a bit have more a, of a, a specific perspe- like yeah. have a, a specific perspective or be informed by something but i think it's just interesting um uh to yeah to think about how people choose topics and the challenges and the positive things that come with that but Mm -hmm. this is something i i just realized i see a lot in the uel sharings when i go and do the third year sharings um with their pieces their their topics are very vague and i think that's Mm. that's often where i i I didn't realize i'm gonna say it now that i'm I'm, because i've got i'm going to your ones i think in march whenever they are but It's like, yeah, people will be like, oh, it's a, it's the topic is anxiety. And it's like, what about anxiety? Pff, yeah, that's a, that's a big old, yeah. t- and then when they struggle to approach it, it's like, cause your top, your topic is like super vague. vague. Like, yeah. so that's really hard to nail down. Like, and then you get this kind of, which I, again, it's like, I see a lot in UL, but it also happens with a lot of people, I think starting out making work where it's like, you get this very general approach to it. It's like, for example, anxiety we're gonna start doing movements that are like really shaky and fast and and we're gonna like have dancers running around in circles on set and it's like of mm. course you are it's <laughs> there's anxious it makes you think of these things you translate it into movement done yeah. like mm. it's very general approach as opposed yeah. to we're gonna tell this specific story or like we're gonna talk about this specific culture or myth like you said like these type mm. of things but i think that you know and i guess like there's a skill in 
choreo- doing choreography and putting movement together. But I also think that there is a skill in like storytelling. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we spoke about this on the pod before, but this is a skill yes. that you cannot underestimate because your yeah, whole thing is... in theatre. Yeah. Like you might be a good dancer, but it's like your whole... I mean, ra- let's say rappers might be good rappers, but they still get people to write their hooks for them in the choruses yeah. and stuff. So it's like... If you're a dancer, you might be a great dancer, but you might not be good at storytelling and you can't just be like, oh, I'll do it. Oh no, me and Abe talk about it with acting. It's the same with storytelling. It's like, there's people that are good at that. So you have to go and research that as much as like, mm-hmm. you wouldn't sit down and be like, oh, I'm going to make my own music for this. Yeah. Cause you're like, well, I can't make music. Well, you might not be able to tell stories either, mm-hmm. but you have to do your research and you know, figure that out or draft and help. We also can't spend this long on every piece. So let's <laughs> go on to the second one. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah but just just to finish off yes. this one just to say like i think like she has great dancers and she yeah. has a great concept and idea so I, I hope she develops it and like makes it like just take a risk with it yeah keep, keep going yeah keep going going um okay let's move on to justin or i justin. think you pronounce it justin because he's dutch, dutch. Uh, yeah uh, you have more experience do you know this guy yeah oh he's so good yeah, man he was amazing this piece was i have to say oh I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Just say it with your chest. <laughs> One of the best pieces I've seen on that stage for a while. Sick. Woo! Sick. For go, a while. Justin, go. But me, that's also very heavily influenced by my personal your love taste. Yes. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> but was it heavy? not was it even. It was. It was only threading. It was only. <laughs> it was a whole piece of threading, but it wasn't only that. Like it's definitely personal preference, but not just that. It was like allow me to step on the beginning of your review, but. It. um just because I'm very passionate about this. But so I'm really a fan of like, uh, and anything that I've touched in the last maybe six, seven years or so has been very like this approach of like minimalism. Mm. So what on the research I've done of that is like minimalism in terms of, not in terms of like not having your clothes in the thing, but like the art <laughs> movement of minimalism. You know, people that like throw away all their clothes. And oh, like, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. Live. oh yeah, you're definitely, you're definitely not that at no, all. No, I have more clothes than... All right, all right, both of you. Fuck, you know. Um, <laughs> I wish like you, 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 wish you would research point. it more. Um, no, but with the art movement minimalism, it was about like stripping back the, it was, so there's a thing that came before it called expressionism, which is very big, bright colors and, and drawing people and, and all this type of stuff. Minimalism was like after that and almost a rejection of that where it was, no, we're not going to draw a person. We're not going to draw a house. We're not going to draw this big, pretty thing. We're going to draw like, we're going to put a dot in the middle of the paper. We're going to draw some lines. We're going to put bricks in a pyramid in the middle of the room. And that's the art, mm. right? And the whole point of that is that it's supposed to represent like honesty and truth and being present in the moment. It's not about, here's a picture of a person. So think about the person. Don't think about the picture, right? Minimalism is like, no, this brick in the middle of the room is the art. How does it make you feel? If you're like, oh my God, I feel so calm and happy. Then you're like, cool. If it's like, I hate this, this is a piece of shit. Then it's like, cool. Everything's valid. Like, this is what I love about that thing. And this is why that's been a lot of my drive with the dance stuff. And I think for me, I saw a lot of that in his piece, this like minimalism approach right so he Mm -hmm. had like he basically came out on stage just in his boxes um props to him for that um yeah you missed up um but he and it was basically this i this idea of like threading and stuff like that but for me what was so uh enthralling is that right word or like it grasped me so well yeah it's just because it was like it was just about the thing that was there it was really like a minimalism art thing for me it was like it's just this thing like look at it's like it almost wasn't a body anymore like i wasn't looking at a person i was just looking at movement muscles and bones and things being moved around and i really was like almost lost for a minute because you know when you hold we were talking about this but like when you hold a certain position or you're moving in a certain way for so long it's like when you're writing lines at school and you forget you're like is this how a word is supposed to be spelt because you've written it so many times. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was looking at the stage and I'm like, is this even a person anymore? Like it was like tripping me out a little bit. Yeah, And I think it was like, it really grabbed me because I was like, this is so sick. And he just kept going and delved deep into one topic, which I love, or not yeah. topic, but like one theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hate when people flitter around and do too much and don't really commit to anything. He was like, yeah. I'm doing this threading thing. 
and I'm committing to it. And he went deep into it, and it wasn't repetitive. It was a ten minute threading piece. Only oh, it was just one, two, da 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 da, da for yeah. like ten so, minutes, and it did not get boring. He didn't feel like he was repeating music. Um, I don't know much about what the music was. I can't even remember. There was some. There was music, like, yeah. ambient. Kind well, of. Feel, yeah, it was like more like I feel like it was soundscapey, really right, background right. thing. Yeah, like, I wasn't even paying attention. To cool. The music and it was. Uh, he also had a, a like. It was so well done. It, I was like, oh, he is a mature theatre maker. Like, mm-hmm. I watched that and I was like, oh, okay, he's a professional. Like, he's done this before. It's, it's no accident. Because he's doing this thing and he really also draws you in. When you do really minimalistic, and I mean that in the actual sense, minimalistic, um, movement, it's like people are forced to, like, zero in on what you're doing if they want to focus, right? Because you're not going out there and grabbing their attention. So he did this whole thing where he's built and you're like just lost in this tiny little intricate movement. And then at the very end, he kind of like, he's got this whole theme with his hands locked like this. And then he kind of yeah. stands up and like looks at the audience. And he's just kind of looking from audience member to audience member, like just like. For like a good like, 30 seconds. And it was yeah. so long. And actually I had such a little moment of like, uh, I had a little tingle because I was like, I hope this happens. And it happened exactly like nice. my, I was begging for it to happen in my head and it yeah. happened perfectly. But basically like he looks up like this and it went on for so long that he's just standing there in the, like no lights were fading. The music was, I don't know if the music faded or it carried on. Yeah, it was silent. Okay. It was silence, Yeah, this was silence. And he's around, just looking yeah. and I was like, I hope he, please just cut to black. I hope it just drops and it just fades out. And it's exactly what happened. Like yeah. just a little bit until it was almost too long. And I was like, mm-hmm. This might not even be the end. This might right, be the start right. of a new section. And then just all of a sudden, boom, cut to black. And I was like, oh, that yeah. was so good. But did you realize, because I didn't real? I watched the tech like a few times because I also went to the tech runs to take some pictures. And yeah. um, like I only realized after the third time watching it that he opened his hands on the end. Oh, before the oh, lights. I yeah. wondered. I, that's what I, I thought really you were going to say. I didn't realize. And then like I watched the last tech run and I was like, oh my God, he opens his hand. It's crazy. Yeah, that was really cool. I so, love that piece. Yeah, it good. was really, yeah, really okay. interesting. Very good. And he's... Um, you carry on speaking, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> look up, look something up before I say it. He is a to save myself for editing. Go on, um, yeah. Do you have any more on that? Yeah, I wanted to say something. Oh yeah, and also it's super funny because in the feedback session after he said that he didn't have a storyline, mm-hmm. like he was just playing with the threading, but mm-hmm. he he didn't have anything in mind. He just wanted to like play with it, um, which I feel like was super cool, and also like he didn't have any specific lights it was just it started really dark and then just went brighter throughout <coughs> but there was no spotlight nothing okay. it was just like One just state. a cold yeah exactly just a cold light in, Which, in the oh, room this it was such a me piece like ah oh, so good yeah so good but i'm really curious to see like if like if he, if he actually created some kind of storyline and like build with the lights, if he had more time to like develop it, right? You know what? Would the lights would be so. Sick. Yes, lights. I think would be really cool. Yeah. I love good, a good like use of Light lights design. in a piece. Like, I loved your um, mum edit more oh. for that. Was, was it at the place yeah. with the boxes? Ugh, yeah. Just really added so much to it. But I think with his, because um, John Z had asked in the feedback had said do you think it needs a story right. or were you okay yeah. with it not and i wonder if that was a because often John Z will do that where he'll ask a question that continues from the process yeah so i wonder if that was something that they had gone back and forth about that yeah. maybe he was maybe John Z was like you might not need a story like it's yeah. fine or whatever i would be an advocate to say it doesn't need a story mm. like you could make that into like a 30 minute piece or, or something without i mean you need narrative structure to the piece yeah. but in terms of a like well, it what it's about. Yeah, I think it, it's like whatever it is, even if it's just a piece that's about movement, period. I think it, there needs to be an arc in, yes. the, in yes. the movement. Well, this is why I see the difference between like structure and uh, structure and story. I don't know if you see that mm. to be two different things or not. Well, I mean... Like there's a structure to a battle round without there being a story. You're not saying, oh, I'm a guy yeah, yeah, who yeah. did this. No, but I yeah, I agree. Meaning like I think like a structure... A story has to have a structure, but also sure. if it's just movement, I think like, uh, well, I think anyways, a piece in a theater, like it's all about maintaining the tension between yeah. the performer and the audience. So if there's no structure at some point, you know, if things go on too long, mm. you lose the yeah, interest of 100%. the audience. And if things switch too quickly, then, you know, you also lose it because people don't know what the hell's happening. Mm-hmm. So I think... 
whether you're doing that just purely with movement or with a, a clear narrative or with an abstract narrative, I think story it's about maintaining that tension because story comes with it a structure naturally. People tend to lean on story in order to get a structure. Yeah, but does that make sense? This is the thing that, yeah, that's no. difficult. I think with the like dance, for example, because it's a, a medium that doesn't use like language, so sometimes it can be really tricky to get a, a story narrative across. But that, that's what I'm saying is like, I think mm. I would always be an advocate in my own work for using more structure. And I, I don't like using story, right? Like in yeah. terms of like, this is a character who did this. But I think people, when they're faced with, I don't know what to do, but my piece is a mess or this is just mm. a bunch of movement, they lean towards, well, let's make it into a story. Because when you try and tell a story, even if you're failing at the story aspect, you're still There's maintaining the structure. Sense out of it, yeah. yeah. So you're like, oh, this is the beginning bit. This is the middle. And it, even we feel that, but also what we don't feel is well, at the end when you tell us, oh, this is the story of like whatever. And then we're like, yeah. oh, I didn't get that. But you got the structure out of it. So I think mm. a lot of times people maybe want structure and take story instead. Yeah, fair. Next one. Yes, next one. <laughs> the other piece. Okay. Uh, moving on to Chantel. Yeah. Ah, yes. Uh, ah, Presented yes. some work ah, with, yes. with uh, oh. Shanika Wallace. I hope I say that right. I think it's Shanika. Yeah. Um, so in this piece, Chantel said she wanted to represent herself, like her past self and her present self. So mm. that's why there were two dancers, uh, which were representing the same person. Um, and throughout the piece, they were both, um, wait, how am I going to say that? Sorry. Um, so the piece starts with uh, <coughs> them on the opposite side of the stage. And uh, Chantel is way more aggressive in her movement. Um, sorry. Translating. Yeah, I'm just thinking about how to say that properly <laughs> without it sounding weird. Uh, yeah, she starts off uh, super aggressive in her movement while um, Shanika is only watching her. And mm. then slowly they start to come together and we understand that they're actually the same person. Mm. Um, that was a whole big thing in the feedback as well, wasn't it? Like yeah. whether or not we got from it that they're that supposed to be one person or person. not. I don't yeah. think I did. I don't know. I don't think I did either, but I feel like when watching, I didn't get it. But when I started writing like about it, I was like, like there's so many s things in the piece like that actually started posting. to make sense. Yeah, right. like like the thing. There's a moment where they use some kind of spotlights to create shadows on the walls, mm. and like on the moment, I was just like, oh, that's a really cool effect. And I understand the whole like shadow thing with the present, the past, and like <clears throat> like the fact that um, Shanika was always coming like behind Chantel to like reassure her and hug her. Like mm. so, there's this thing of like reassurance and like mm -hmm. a more mature mm -hmm. uh, person or version of yourself, I guess. Um, so there's like this, this really, this big difference between Chantel being super aggressive, the whole, like, um, the, the whole piece and then Shanika being way more calm and reassuring. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up with them two, um, in the middle of the stage and like Chantel ends up like putting her uh, head on, uh, Shanika's lap. Which one is which? Which one is the now and the past and the future and the... So Chantel is the, uh, representing the past person and ah, the present person yeah interesting yeah oh that's why she's calming down the part oh it's like a like she's traveling uh, yeah, okay, exactly. okay, okay. Traveling. i thought it was like her past calming her down now and i was like that doesn't make sense okay yeah what yeah. you said makes more sense and also the moment <clears throat> where they dance together like that's the moment I, I guess for me it's like supposed to represent the like the moment we understand actually the same person right if that makes sense oh because it yeah that makes yeah. more sense and um she had said that she did this piece before, right? <clears throat> I think. I'm not sure. I don't know where, but it's like, I think it wasn't a brand new yeah, she, idea. Oh, yeah, she kept saying that she, yeah. when she did the, the piece the first time, but I don't think she explained where. No, when. Um, yeah. Be interesting. So an evolution of an idea. We like it. Yeah. yeah. We do like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was super um, interesting. I feel like, 
I would like to see more difference between them, but it's also it's hard to balance because they're supposed to be the same person. So how like how they could balance in the future, like showing like maybe more that this the same person because apparently some people didn't get it in the room, but also understand that they don't have the same mentality. Like a, like that's gonna be a, a yeah. I, I mean, thing. this is what Jen was just saying about it's super hard to tell this stuff through dance. Like mm. if this was on film, it'd be way easier. Yeah. You could use the same person, <laughs> yeah. but it's mm. like in the in a live theater dance show, you're like really. It's like you're really strapped and, for, and maybe that's where the copy comes in. The copy comes in, yeah, mm. like the the written part, mm-hmm. the blurb, the blurb, or or sometimes mm. it's like if it's a, supposed to be a very clear narrative or whatever, then maybe if people need that to understand the piece, yeah, the piece, yeah. then maybe it's like you need another, you know, whether or it's a, a projection or like not necessarily spoken word, but like recorded like words yeah. or, but. Agreed. But well done. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like they had a lot of <coughs> light cues. I feel like maybe that's a... Obviously, like, it was just work in progress and, like, they did the tech, like, the same day of the show, so mm. it was a bit mm. last minute, but, yeah, like, maybe if they really organized... Because they had some great lights, I think, with, like, the shadow thing, if, like, everything yeah. worked, mm-hmm. but if they take some time to figure this out. To really like work with the lights more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm. and also I feel like he was switching a little bit fast so we didn't have time to like, we were literally like catching an idea and then it was just going away. Mm. So like maybe like take more time on one light and like develop, make it longer maybe. Mm. Sure. Yeah. Cool. And then we had the Brazilian guy last, right? Yes. Well. Um, I'm not sure how we say (coughs) his name, so I'm so sorry, but Leozin Leonardo. Who was it? Was it? Spell it. L e o z e n i n. I think it was like Lau Lausin or something. I think that's how you Portu- say. It. Yes. Portuguese Lausin. Yeah. I'm gonna call him <laughs> Leo. <laughs> DiCaprio. Yes, exactly. Lau. Um, yeah. Uh, it was a very interesting piece. I think to watch. I think on the moment, I really struggled to get the idea behind it. It was captivating though because the dance was captivating and like the whole. Uh, stage with the lights was really interesting. I like the colors <coughs> of the orange and the blue. It was really nice. Um, and like, obviously, you could see like the capoeira background dancer. Like, I feel like this is super nice when there's, it's super effortless. The movement are impressive, but super effortless. Yeah, mm-hmm. he had some nice some movement um, yeah. phrases in there. Yeah, and like great performance too. Like there was the switches, um, especially in the face and everything. So mm-hmm. that was great. Um, I think that I will say though, with the concept or the idea, like he used a lot of um, <clears throat> photographs as references for the movement. And I think that's one of those things where it's like, it's not a narrative concept or a lot, not something that you can get or not get. If you know what I mean? It's like, mm-hmm. he yeah. just created movement. It sounded like he created movement just as inspired by these pictures which he didn't show us so i think all we're left to do is to look at the movement so it's like it's one of those that it's like if you don't get something from the movement you it's not necessarily a negative thing it's just like Mm. it was what it was there and you take what you take from it but it wasn't supposed to be like a yeah something that we were supposed to get something from yeah not Mm -hmm. something we were supposed to understand or yeah definitely and i think i also was a bit disappointed in the feedback because obviously like he like his english wasn't like Mm -hmm. really like he couldn't speak really well um and like they didn't have a translator so we couldn't really get the idea behind well that girl was translating in for a little bit but yeah but honestly i I struggled like i feel like if they knew they had someone that didn't speak english they maybe should have like had someone Mm, to that's true translate especially if he's getting feedback and he's not understanding. well i think it was sweet but it's like he was trying his english to speak with us and the girl kind of let him and i was like that's really sweet, but also we want to know in full what his idea. You know what I mean? He was kind of almost giving up on what he was saying because he was, right, he right. tried to get out like ah uh, yeah it's kind of like that. And it's like tell her to <laughs> that's why she's there kind of thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But yeah, I feel like maybe like maybe there would be a way to implement the images like um. I would have put them on the projector. Yeah, like a projector or something <clears throat> like that would be cool. But again, it's like you you can't really say because it's like. Maybe that was the whole thing. He didn't want them to be seen. And in which case... It's just having a point of departure and going from there and seeing what comes out. Yeah. But I mean, like, if he wanted that as, yeah, his point of departure and not as a aid to the audience. Like me, I would have had the thing that I'm referencing in the back. But that's kind of more... But also, I I think, like, his aim was, like, he was saying... I think that's what I got. But, like, from the images, he was trying from one image to 
show different perspectives of the same image. So it would have been cool to have one reference and then see all the all the yeah. path that went into his brain, you know? Mm. Mm. Like that would have been interesting. But yeah. yeah. Um yeah, what did you think of the night overall as a whole? Is it your first breaking convention experience? Did you have fun? Um yeah, I think it was really cool to watch. I think I would have liked to watch more pieces to be honest. Mm. Like the four felt a bit short and the feedback um well, the fact that you have to speak in a mic, like for, for example, someone. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right. A bit less comfortable. Yeah, Sophia was like, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'd also, I also didn't want to speak because obviously I was going to write this. But um, yeah, I feel like maybe there should be some kind of like QR code you can, like, you know, with yeah, the uni, that been nice. like, like uh, a uni, there was a QR, QR code you can scan and then mm -hmm. like there's a thing for each piece and you can write anything and it's anonymous. And I yes. feel like that would, that would be, be a really good thing for cool them to also have that yeah, as well. Exactly. Yeah. Like they can yeah. keep it after and like really like go down, like go back to it because I feel like only Ambush had like a, an, an, like notes, she took notes, but the rest were just listening and right. you can't just have everything in your head, you know. And I think they record, I think they give you a Ah, yeah, record. that's true, they, re they record. Of, true. Oh yeah, they do give you a video, yeah. True. Um, <clears throat> but also to, like instinctive feedback is different than like... Considered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. or like In more the intentional, next day. Definitely. Yeah, more intentional. Uh, you can be a bit more sensitive about what, I mean, you might not want to be, but... Mm. It can be a bit more <clears throat> kind of considerate with your thoughts, I think. Mm. Yeah, when you give it some time and you're not responding. Yeah, yeah. and seconds. also you're not. Perf it's a bit performative as well because, like, you know, there's a whole audience there. Yeah, and, yeah, and some people wouldn't yeah. do well. Like <laughs> it would. Like I'd like to think that if I was giving feedback, it would be the same as if it was just us two sat across a table. Mm. But not everyone would speak in the same. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Right. Um, yeah, the QR code thing is a good idea. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's why we had at uni for our sharings, and that was great because you don't even know who wrote anything, but it's just there. Anonymous to go back written to feedback yeah. would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, main stage this year. Let's go to that because mm. it'll be good. Yeah. Oh, the dates out? I don't think I so. Think, oh, or are they? Or maybe they are. I've seen the poster. Have you? So. Oh, maybe I'm talking rubbish. So. Be the first time. Hey, hey, hey. What's up? What's up? Uh, let Don't me see think. it. All events. Do we have the dates for breaking con? I feel like it would probably yes. 28th of April to the 30th of April. There we go. Mm. Oh, it's only three days. 20 yeah, yeah. So oh, bank holiday weekend. Oh, that's oh, nice. Gosh, I'm gonna be away on the 30th. Oh, I will cool. go on the 29th. Okay, I'll make sure I'm here. I'll probably be here because I'll have a, an enormous amount of assessments. Woo! Because I'm finishing. <coughs> you are indeed. Graduating. Um, 